couple of weeks, uh, one even a couple of weeks ago, uh, possibly less than a couple of weeks ago, I was talking about the map of the Royal Navy's as it saw the world in terms of merchant ships. And the merchant ships it was concerned, uh, concerned with were the ones above 3,000 gross tons. Well, the Doric Star certainly fits in that category. At full load, she's 13,500 tons. She is a big shipper for this period. She is the equivalent of, I don't know, some of the big container ships in this period. She is a large prize. Actually, arguably, she is a prize which the Grass Bay Langsdorff could have gone home with, claiming as his last prize and being proud of. But no. She is sunk. She is found. She is sunk. Here she is. On the 2nd of December. 23 days till Christmas. More importantly, 11 till the Battle of the River Plate. 15, a little over two weeks. So the grass being herself is sunk on the 17th. She is sunk. And she is sunk with torpedoes and shell fire. So again, she is a costly ship to sink. She's a big prize, but by God is she difficult to sink. And this is a problem for a surface raider, especially a surface raider which is getting towards the end of her time. Because every single torpedo you use cannot be replenished. Every single shell used cannot be replenished. So, the more you fight, the less you can fight. And there is no supply line, there is no infrastructure. The outmark is all she has, and she wasn't carrying a lot. So the Doric Star is gone. And just as importantly, the Doric Star has got off a communication. So, if we go to another map. If we look at this map, you can see the Doric Star is sunk on the second. I will get to the Taroa tomorrow. So please ignore this one. Both of them, they get signals from. It's also not far from the Trevanion, which was one of the earliest kills. It was sunk. So, it's been a good fertile ground, this area, for the Grass Bay. But the trouble is, she did all this to throw off the British, to throw off the trackers, and now, bing, her position is revealed. The main hunter fleets are down here. The main hunter fleets are well away from her. If she was making a straight shot up for the American coast to go up to home, she could probably do this now with these fleets well behind her. But no, now she's done this, and they are going to come steaming up there. There is no surprise that on the second, the Doric is sunk, and on the second, these head north. The only surprise is the Grass Bay actually dawdles around this area till the 3rd, and then jets across the Atlantic. There are many things which make you question the psychology of senior officers when they're making decisions. Now we know Langsdorff is always bearing in mind the criteria he is supposed to keep the ship alive. This makes him very conservative. Then you add in his gentlemanly tactics when dealing with, uh, with merchant ship vessels and the you know, a treatment he shows them, the fact he gives them the time to send off the radio signals. You can't help start thinking he has almost decided he's going to die. Maybe subconsciously. But consciously, if he's going to die off that direction to make a kill instead of going through straight there across to the rich killing zones of the River Plate, then you have to ask 
what is he doing? We can argue it's psychology of the operation. He's trying again to get a maximum number of kills. But if he was getting maximum number of kills, he should be in the areas where there's maximum number of merchant ships. If he's trying for maximum impact, he's already killed ships in this area. He's already sunk ships here. What's he doing going back here? Is he trying to show impunity? Is he trying to demonstrate to the Royal Navy, haha, I've slipped behind you? Whatever he's doing, it's yes, it's a kill. Yes, he's a kill. But it's argued to it's hard to argue it's good strategic judgment going on here. Because the surface radar, which is not on a maximum killing screen, but is on a psychological economic warfare, i.e. trying to seek the maximum damage. Well, you've been killing in this area, then you've gone away and around to the Indian Ocean to show you can hit the Indian Ocean. Then you come back to this area, and then you go to the River Plate. He's taking his time. You know, it'd be more sense to have gone bang, 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 than bang, 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 bang. It's all a bit sort of, you know, long, long-winded. And he's going to kill another ship on his way across. So he's even going to make it obvious where he's going. So what is he doing? Does has he been lulled into a false sense of security? Has he managed to avoiding the Royal Navy for so long down there? lull them into this idea that he can continue to avoid the Royal Navy, that the Royal Navy aren't there. I believe in his own hubris. There is a good possibility of this. This is always an option. You know, that would certainly explain the Strenosha and the Tyra. That would explain killing these ships, which reveal his movements. But it's interesting to note, again, he kills one on the 2nd, the 3rd, 7th, we'll be talking about these ships. And then on the 13th, when he's going to run into the richest trade area he has been to, the area which is literally thronging with these massive ships, the ships that are like the Doric Star, the big ships, the ones over 3,000 tons, the ones the Royal Navy is really, really worried about, he doesn't get to make a kill. He runs straight into Royal Navy cruisers, which are waiting for him. Which might not have been waiting for him, allowing him to make a lot more kills if he hadn't dawdled, if he hadn't done these extra ships. Yet, of course, these extra ships are actually some of his biggest kills. So, it's a judgment call, and I hate second-guessing commanders at the time, because they have the information they have, and they make the best call they can. So it feels always a bit sort of hindsight 2020. But, saying that, you also have to look at these things from an educational perspective, if you're trying to teach people about strategy, about thought. You have to consider the strategic decision he made to go west, uh, to go east rather than west, and then go west, has hampered him. It has meant that he is delayed getting to the richest area he could do. It's meant that he's given more time to the Royal Navy to organise. And it's meant that he has expended even more resources. For what? The thing is, if he managed to get to the river plate earlier, there are whole convoys of merchant ships forming up and heading up. He might have been able to run down one and kill off 10, 12 ships. There are all sorts of ships moving about. He could have had made a massive killing, but he doesn't. 
He could have sat off the river plate for a couple of days and not had any cruises or anyone turn up. Because the, really, the hardwood spores only just beats the grass bay to the river plate in terms of forming up. Remember, it's been covering a lot of areas. And Harwood makes a decision based on Langsdorff's timings previously, based on Langsdorff not having killed enough ships to go home in glory, based on Langsdorff needing to go home in glory, based off Germany needing more of an impact to actually justify all the effort they've put into this operation, Harwood heads to the River Plate. Now, Langsdorff, you can argue, doesn't know this is happening, but Langsdorff has pointed himself towards the River Plate after sinking the Doric Star. He's starting to orientate himself in that direction when he could have done it beforehand and he could have got there days earlier. It's a complicated one. But it does seem like this is one of those ships which it's a lovely prize. Yes, you won a prize. The prize is you've hastened your own demise. Anyway, that's enough for today. Uh, I'll be chatting again to you tomorrow. Hopefully we're in a different time. I know, you've seen this one a lot recently. Take care.